Hey guys, what's up? I'm Wit. I'm Doug. And we are the, the stream, stream team. team. That was a little less enthusiastic than what we usually do. <laughs> um, today we're talking about cameras, yes. which is something I know a little bit about. So yeah, what's so actually gonna be able nice. to make a little more of a contribution on this one than some Let's of the switching and whatnot. And so. <laughs> No pressure. And so if, if you're just joining us for the first time, this is a series that we've created to help people who are just getting started in live streaming. So we're talking about cameras and switching and uh, how to get streams up and going and audio and you name it, everything related to live video production. So it's a lot. Yeah, this is actually our first episode in what I call our level up series. So what that really means is, <laughs> it's like, this is news to me. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> this is level up. Yeah, so basically we're taking a, something we talked about previously and just taking it to the next level. Oh. So we'll be, we'll be doing cool. a number of these. So we'll have, I'll have one on higher end switchers and we'll have one mm. on audio and things like that. So. So this is for, for all you level uppers. That's right. So yeah. if you've already mastered everything we talked about before, <laughs> yeah. So this is for you. <laughs> so, um, and we've made reference to there being differences between some lower end cameras versus higher end cameras, but we mm -hmm. haven't really ever gone to any detail on that. So that's kind of what we wanted to go over today. So yeah. we've got <laughs> more than a handful of cameras. <laughs> There's more throughout too. We just don't have enough room on the table. So uh, I guess we just very briefly. So small consumer camcorder. You know, this is a this one is a Sony FDR AX53. Pretty yeah. decent for what they are. Um, under a thousand dollars, a pretty good choice for someone just getting started in streaming. Is it Sony? This is a Sony. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. So pretty pretty good. It's a, it also makes a really good vlogging camera, by the way. It's like mm. I think it showed in a previous episode. How it has I can a, see that. Has a a gimbal built into it, and the whole lens oh, mechanism yeah, I moves. You yeah. Me yeah. That. It's crazy to watch it so, that's cool. uh, so yeah, really that's good nice. for camera you need to move around not great in low light but you got to spend some money to get that so. i feel like if i showed up to a professional shoot with that I'd probably, they'd laugh at you yeah it wouldn't look good <laughs> i'd be like oh did they you say get that, that from but Best Buy? <laughs> <laughs> actually yes <laughs> um but I've actually seen some professionals show up with cameras like this. I mean, there's some that are just a little bit higher end than this that are yeah. would be far better for professional use. But this wouldn't be awful if you have a well-lit environment. So okay. I have actually used this camera professionally before. Um, for live? For live, yeah. Where do you good. plug everything in? So, you know, you've got your HDMI port on the side here and okay. then power in the back. Um, so. You know, it can work. Again, not great in low light. So, I mean, but if you're shooting outdoors in the sun, you can, you can almost can't distinguish the quality of the picture between this and one of these bigger professional ones. Like, so the more light you got, the better these cameras look. Mm -hmm. So, if you're in an environment with a lot of lighting, something like this could actually work well. Okay. So, yeah. So that's small camcorder. Uh, next one, we've re referenced this one a number of times. So this is a Canon EOS RP. EOS RP. Yeah. It's actually really small. It is very too, small, like especially for being a, body a of full it. frame. So I remember when you showed this to me, I was like, does it do video? Because it's so yeah, small. It actually does 4K video, yeah. So, <laughs> so pull the lens off the front and show, show everybody how big the sensor is in that thing. So it's it's enormous. The sense, it's, it's a full frame sensor, so it's huge. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize how big it was. Yeah, it's the biggest sensor of any of the cameras here, including the monster, monster I've got here on the floor in front of me. Um, but I can't do this with my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, cameras like that, they can be made to work, but they're far less than ideal. Um, a lot of limitations. For example, you're not going to be able to do a smooth zoom with that. You no, because you're having to. <laughs> turn and it. I've used these like when I used to film the karate convention I go to every year. Mm -hmm. I always had a DSLR because mm -hmm. it was affordable. And right. It's just what I had. Yeah. But I'd be constantly. Yeah. Doing this all day and, and in action. You yeah. <laughs> it's almost impossible to get a get a good depth of field or like to make it look nice. So I just usually stayed pretty wide. Right. And hopefully they didn't go out of focus. <laughs> I mean that, some that, of these have like the follow face thing, but usually it's not. Yeah, the autofocus reliable. on this style that tends to not be as good as autofocus on yeah. like a camcorder. 
Mm -hmm. um, they, I mean, there are some that can be good. This one actually is pretty good in terms of autofocus. It's one of the better ones. But, I mean, you've got some other limitations. Like, uh, you know, when I'm producing, I always like to not only record my master program, but I also like to record in camera as well. Mm. This one only records for 30 minutes before it just shuts off. It's some right. weird Europe tax thing. <laughs> it, but it, it intentionally stop, stop, uh, stops recording at 29 minutes and 59 seconds. Yeah. So if you're shooting something that's longer than that... I can't believe that's still a thing because when I had this a couple years ago, <laughs> <laughs> it would always shut off when I was doing interviews yeah. and it was really annoying. Yeah, it's still a thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's not a technical limitation. It's a, it's a tax law thing in Europe. So cameras that can record 30 minutes or longer are taxed yeah. differently than the cameras okay, These that are made so. more for film stuff, Yeah. not live. I mean, it's, well, it's primarily made for taking it, pictures, right? I mean, it's right? more for pictures, really. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but in terms of other uses for it, the next thing that would be appropriate would be film. Right. And then, like, the least appropriate use for a camera like that would be live. Mm -hmm. uh, but it also has the sensor in it is not a 16 by, nas 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It's a 3 by 2. So if you use that camera, you get black bars on the sides of your picture for live. Just a lot of, you make a lot of compromises yeah. with a camera like this. And, uh, and this, with the Canons in particular, especially at this level, it's difficult to get a clean H, a signal out, out the HDMI port. You know, like when we've used this in the, in the past, we, it actually shows the focus sensor, or focus uh, box in the center of the screen. Because During live, like you, they can see it? Yeah, you have to actually go into the menu and uh, turn that. Well, actually, you put it to manual focus so that it doesn't do the autofocus box. So yeah, oh, it just so they can see what you see. Yeah, exactly. You're well, <laughs> they can see what you would see on the back, but once you plug that HDMI port in, the screen turns off. So then you can't even if you're at the camera, you can't even see what you're shooting. So it just <laughs> it's not made How, for it. Yeah, it's, it's really not, not made work. for it. Uh, I mean, the reason they have the HDMI is if you want to put a monitor on top of the camera and record in that separate monitor. Oh, okay. But it's not made that for live. Sense. It's really not yeah, made for no, live. Yeah, no, there's no way. So. I think the reason we liked this is because it had interchangeable lenses, mm -hmm. which is a big deal if you don't have a lot of money. Well, it gives you the and opportunity then you to, can change it, yeah. to get a look that you can't get otherwise. Yeah. You know? So, you know, you're never going to get the same look out of a, a camera like this as you would with this, with a, mm -hmm. like a 50, millim 50 millimeter 1. f1.2 lens. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's not going to have such a crazy shallow depth of field. You're just not going to get that on these. But usually so. the lenses cost more than the camera, so yeah, there's that too. The nice you thing just is <laughs> lenses to hold their value pretty well, whereas the camera bodies don't. So you, if exactly, you're gonna, if you're yeah. going to invest in something, invest in lenses, not mm -hmm. in a fancy camera. I would always buy the body and then I'd buy the lens separately. Right. I'd never buy the kit, right? Because it's just a waste. Yeah. So, yeah, but there's a lot. Of, there's an awful lot of reasons why these cameras don't work well for live. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't recommend it. I and mean, if you're buying something new, definitely don't buy that. Not for live. If, if you were going to make a choice live. between these two for live, get this one, even mm -hmm. though it's cheaper, you know? Yeah. So. A lot of people don't realize, I think, that you need to zoom in and out a lot, especially if it's just you. Mm -hmm. Because you need to constantly, unless you're just going to do you one boring shot. wide yeah. shot, yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. anyone can do that. You need to break it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. 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 And zoom is a great way to do it. And, and depending on the content you're shooting, like when I, we do a lot of concert type stuff in, mm -hmm. with my company. Um, and I always like to have those shots moving. Like yeah. Five out of six shots, I like to have my have motion in. It's very rare that I actually do a shot that's just not moving. Just static. static. Yeah. yeah. Well, the last one we did, I think the entire time I was moving. Yeah. Zooming in and out the yeah. entire time. Zooming or panning or something, mm -hmm. you know, just get just to make it more interesting. And trying to zoom with something like this is basically impossible. So. Yeah. Although I've done it, but it wasn't live either. Yeah. That's the trick. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you just need to reframe, yeah, grabbing a ring like, ring like this is actually really nice. You mm -hmm. just zoom to where you want to go. You yeah. just jump to it real fast. Mm -hmm. But if you need to, a, a smooth, consistent zoom, you're not going to get it with this. I, I don't care how good, how much you practice. You know, it's just not going to happen. So, not ideal. I got good at it, but I had to fix a lot in post. <laughs> yeah. Can't do that in live. So. so. All right. So, um, kind of also in the more budget segment, we've also got action cameras so this one's a sony it's not the most popular the most popular is gopro yeah <laughs> and if you watch my channel very long you know that i don't like i don't really care for gopros very much yeah. mostly because they don't work very well in live scenario they uh they their output options aren't great i mean they, they have hdmi but they're hard to configure you typically have to have external equipment that you have to add in order to make them connect into a live switching system mm. so just not ideal the, the sony 
And this is a FDR AX3000. That's uh, that right? FDR FX3000. No, that's right. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> that's an FX3000. Um, 4K camera. Really, really good image quality as long as you've got decent light. Uh, again, you, in good light, you have a hard time distinguishing the picture from this, from this, right. as, as long as you got light. Um, but this one actually has a HDMI output, and you can control the format that outputs on the HDMI. So you can like rec record in 4K and then have it output HD. Oh, so that's makes cool. it way easier to hook into a switcher than like the the GoPros. Mm -hmm. And again, has better image quality than the GoPros. So if someone's doing a sort of production where this is the right camera, you know then this is going to be a better choice. Mm. But you wouldn't want this to your, be your primary camera. Uh, not just no. because you can't zoom. <laughs> it's not going to look good It's yeah. the whole time. <laughs> no. So it's, the, other, but the bigger, bigger problem is it's really wide. It's a really wide just angle. I going to say, it'd be good it's, if it's you need to, a wide angle yeah. the whole time um, or like so for a couple shots. One cool way I've used this is stick it on the, on the a neck of a guitar and mm -hmm. shoot down the strings. That's a cool shot. Yeah, that you is know? cool. And it's small enough and light enough that you can get away with that. Or you want to stick stick it in the drums with a drummer mm -hmm. or something like that. These these kind of cameras are really good for that. You never want to make one of these one of your primary cameras. It just uh, you're no. it has too many limitations. I uh, mean, it's in reality, it's more for action. Uh, that's exactly. Stuff. That's, that's exactly why what it it's was made created, for. Yeah. So. yeah, exactly. You can use them. Just don't make it your primary camera. Unless you just so. decide to go on a bike ride live stream. <laughs> and put then, it on your helmet. <laughs> and then really long cable to follow them as they yeah. go. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, again, it's, it's a cool supplement to some other things. But again, that wouldn't be your primary camera. So. No. So that brings us to... Ta-da! This is the one we always use. Yeah, this is my, this is my favorite camera for live use because it's got really good image quality and it's still relatively affordable. I mean, yes, absolutely, there are far better cameras out there, without question, you mm -hmm. know. This is still a compromise, but it produces a good enough quality picture. And this is the Sony Z150. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly, the PXW Z150. Uh, I have it's three relatively of light, too. Yeah, it's, I think it's only like four pounds, uh, but it's a professional camcorder. It's made for doing live stuff. Mm -hmm. And as such, it has the proper connectivity, so you've got. Yeah, and then you got all the buttons. Yep, but that's yeah, that's another right big at one. Your fingertips. Yeah, exactly. So. And when you're doing live, you want to change things quickly. Right. Especially. The last if thing you want to be doing is going through. Going menus. through a menu, <laughs> and you're like, they're ready to start, and you can't. Yeah. Stop the production usually, right. so you got to be ready. Yeah, so you got dedicated buttons for. Well, you got first of all, you got a dedicated ring for controlling your iris. Mm -hmm. So you just grab that and change your exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, dedicated button for gain, white balance, shutter, right. um, knobs for setting audio levels, mm -hmm. buttons for white balance. I mean, like the buttons are just right there; they're accessible. Right. It's ND filter. Yeah, ND filter's nice. built in. Yep. The sun comes out all of a sudden, and then all there's two down. card slots. So when you're recording, if you exceed the amount that's on the first one, it will automatically go to the second one mm -hmm. without stopping. Oh, you can all, the other way you can use so that is never to re miss it. record both to both cards at the same time. So if you're doing a really right. important production, and you can't afford to have a card go bad on you. Two backups. Yeah, you can do two cards in there. Right. Um, nice. You can put nice big batteries in there. The batteries that I use last for about mm -hmm. six hours. But we usually plug it in too. Usually, yeah. If you part. can plug it in, that's the smart thing to do because sometimes always, batteries can go bad it's too. always nice to have the backup so you battery in there as well mm -hmm. as the ac power that way if someone trips over the cord or something right. you know it's still the camera still runs you know yeah. so i remember one shoot i wasn't there but someone went and um ripped out a cord out of the wall to plug in their iphone <laughs> oh man and everything went dead <laughs> So now we tape it to the wall. <laughs> don't yep. touch cords that don't belong to you. That's right. Um, and then they have the HDMI. It's got HDMI. Output. Is yes. it a micro? No, it's full size. Multi. Was multi. Oh, that's something else. Yeah, that's that's an that's a USB connection. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then there's power there and the HDMI. Power. But the main one <laughs> that we prefer to use, the SDI. Yes. SDI is just so much more reliable. That's, that's an audio output, yeah. And then, okay. it yeah, and then the yellow one is composite video for standard definition. I don't know anybody who shoots standard oh, okay. definition anymore. Maybe that's why I don't know what it is. I was like, I <laughs> never used. I've never use used that. that not even once. Not even to try it. Um, but, right. but it's there. Should you need it. And then so. there's two zooms. One with your hand right here, or up here. Top handle. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's more. That's, that's more for the like 
you carry the camera by yeah, the handle and I would only, so. But I don't think I typically use no. those either. And then, yeah. So, yeah. And you, they have, these tend to have professional audio connections on them. So like your right. X, X, XLR. Oh, yeah. That's what I was so, looking for. Yeah. Instead okay. of the eighth inch consumer style. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just a lot of cool advantages. And you have, I mean, dedicated dedicated rings, not just for iris, but for uh, zoom and for focus. And focus, yep. Um, you know, you step up to even higher end cameras, then these are fully mechanical. These are actually electronic on here. So mm -hmm. if you move back and forth, you aren't necessarily guaranteed to be going to the exact same focus position. Oh. So you wouldn't use it with like, like a focus pole or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, it's nice to have a dedicated ring so you're not having to go through menus or anything in order to in order to do zoom or focus or whatever. Right. So, uh, but but these cameras are really designed for doing live, you mm -hmm. know, and so everything about it is just catered to that. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's like it's going to be yeah. it's going to work better in a live environment than one of these smaller ones. So definitely this one. Yeah, <laughs> most definitely. The nice thing is this one has a really great shallow depth of field, so you get that film look mm -hmm. versus this one. But, I mean, typically you don't need a film look for bright or And broadcast. for most time when you're doing live, you don't want that because that shallow depth of field means getting focus is really hard. Yeah, and that's if you've got true. a moving subject, you're never going to get focus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was an event that I helped to shoot uh, with another company a while ago, um, live streaming fitness stuff. Mm -hmm. and. They put me on a uh, Canon camera with a 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 lens, and he wanted me to shoot at f2.8 the whole time. And so the subject it's is so hard. subject is moving around constantly. I'm not sure that I was in focus. Yeah. A lot of the time. The reason you do that in film is because they have blocking in their set, and you know exactly where they'll be. And you have somebody live, whose whole job know. is to set focus. Yeah, and there's <laughs> someone who's also that's their whole job is to make sure they're in focus and they know exactly what's happening live. Yeah, it can you don't be, have that luxury. Anything can happen. Yeah, so. yeah, you, you don't you don't typically rehearse everything in a live environment, so you can't be prepared for everything that's going to happen. Right. So it'd be cool if you could do a shallow depth of field all the time. You know, yeah. it'd be a nice look, but it's just totally impractical. So we did a live up at this other fitness place, <laughs> um, and they did a concert with people at the same time for a training video, and so it was just chaos. There was so much to focus on, and like. 50 people and then they'd have the trainer in the front and then the people on the treadmills in the class mm. and like we were all of us were having a hard time focusing because we didn't know what was happening or who to focus on because right. there's like 20 people yeah. throughout the crowd yeah. and then all of a sudden someone would be talking and someone would be over here and I remember the management would get frustrated I'm like we can't focus on every single thing at the same time. Like we're doing the best we can with all these different people. So even when you have a professional shoot like that and the right camera, it's still difficult sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so this is almost impo yeah, would be then, impossible yeah. for something so, like that. Yeah. I mean, this one, this is kind of a unique animal. So this, uh, the Z one hundred and fifty and some of the other cameras that are part of that same line, they mm -hmm. have a, a huge sensor in it. So it's a one inch sensor, which is, like yeah. nine times bigger than you typically find in a camera like this. Mm -hmm. So you're, it actually gives you a little bit more of that shallow depth of field that you get out of a camera like this. Right. Uh, but that still means you gotta be a little bit careful. So autofocus is, for especially for a camera operator who's not maybe not super experienced, autofocus is actually kind of nice. It's right. Nice to yeah. Have for a lot of these things. So we should show the concert that we shot. Yeah. A it looks cool. <laughs> Yep. We got a lot of compliments. Yep. yep. Yeah. So you guys so. can see what it looks like. But yeah, I love this camera. And then I love the uh, Sony Z70. X70. X70. Dang it. <laughs> you I got wanted it. to sound smart. I always forget the name of this one and then the other one. And then I got it mixed up. <laughs> she got it right before we started. <laughs> she to sound smart. Okay. But it's basically this camera, and, but and smaller. smaller right? Yeah, and that's actually the one we're shooting on right yeah, now. Yeah, and that's the one I like yeah. to take if I need something, because it's like, it's, this is light, and that one's just ridiculously yeah, it, light. It, it's not much bigger than this, right. and it's a professional camera. Yeah, and so. then af and after like a two-hour concert, you want something really light, because yeah. weight is a big deal after yep. a while if you're running so. around. So. But speaking of weight and carrying cameras, should we pull out another couple of episodes, couple models here? So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is... This is a big boy. Yeah, it's big, and it kind of looks impressive, 
but it's yeah. really not. I used this not. for a shoot to like, I'm like, hey, do you have a camera that I could just use as a prop? He gave me this one. <laughs> Honestly, this camera. I actually didn't know it did this. I was just playing with it. I was like, oh, there's a screen. Yeah, there's a screen on there. So this camera <laughs> probably doesn't produce as nice an image as this camera. <laughs> to me, no. To How complete. old is this? Oh, you know? it's actually still a current model. Is it? Yeah. Uh, it's... It's, HD. It's HD. It's not 4K. <laughs> no. um, it's designed to have a certain look. That's really what it's about. Like I, I would imagine, like 90% of the internals of this thing are there's nothing. You know, just empty. What is it? What kind of camera is it? Uh, uh, it's a Sony uh, HXR MC2500, if I remember right. It's meant to look like a professional, like news gathering. I mean, it style. does look yeah. like a new, like it looks impressive, yeah, somewhat. But, but the image but it does look old. The image quality to on me. it is just not great. So the main reason I got that is like if somebody has to be roving around. It's not very heavy though. It's per fairly lightweight. If somebody, if someone has to be roving around, it's nice to have a camera that rests on the shoulder. You put, put, the weight yeah, on, put the weight on your shoulder instead of on your arm. And this one's comfortable too, so it's not bad. Yeah, but I mostly use this one wirelessly. So I put a wireless transmitter on there. Mm. And then that way the camera operator can go, go wherever they want. And I don't think I've ever used it. Yeah. Well, I don't. Yeah, I don't think we've used it on anything you've ever helped me out with. But but the, but the the shoulder mount style can be nice. Uh, right. Yeah. No. Just, that's just not this particular model. <laughs> the, the big problem is like when you get into a camera that's kind of this form factor, they get really expensive really fast. Oh. Like the cheapest one I've seen that sort of looks like this is like six grand plus lens. You know, and the lenses are just as expensive as the camera. Right. And then they don't come with batteries, which are also super expensive. And just like oh, they don't, they don't come with viewfinders. So you're spending oh. another couple thousand dollars on a viewfinder. It's like you just you're. Why would they come with a viewfinder? You can't see what you're doing. They, well, they maybe assume that you're going to be using it in a studio where you put a big monitor oh, on the back. Oh, an external so, monitor. Yeah, so they're giving you choices. Okay. But they're expensive, so <laughs> you know, a minimum choices. investment for for a professional camera that's kind of this form factor, you're looking twelve thousand dollars roughly. So, but realistically, if you want something good. <laughs> You're twenty thousand plus per camera. Right. Yeah. Real professional, sixty thousand plus on just the body, and then you spend that much on the lens too. Price points all all over the all place. Over the place. <laughs> this looks like you could almost put a videotape in it. Almost, yeah. That's why it <laughs> yeah. looks funny yeah. to me. It's, it's got an SD card slot over here, so <laughs> that's what it records on. But yeah, it totally has the same same uh, style as one of the. But the old. connections, everything works great for live or aside okay? from the fact that it just doesn't it, this does horribly in low light i'll say that okay uh, yeah image not so great in in the sun sure you know i wouldn't i wouldn't have a problem using this for live and in, in, out shooting out in the sun so there's that yeah not one i use frequently but but it's there as an option if i ever need it so uh speaking of cameras that can be used on the shoulder here is black magic ursa mini this is one of their older style ones this is a, a this is heavy thing. this one is can be quite heavy it's especially yeah. when you start putting a monitor and like you know rig yeah they really it's, designed this it's heavy as a film camera yeah but they've kind of after the fact added features to it to make it work better for live mm. um so you know film camera dna it's got removable lens you know so uh you can use this one particular one uses uh, canon lenses you can get them with other mounts as well mm. um but they do have the sdi connections on, right, on the yeah. back so you got your SDI output it also has an SDI input which is really cool it's like I have video coming back from the switcher so that the camera operator can see whatever is currently live oh, so okay. they press the program button on the side and it switches to whatever shows whatever whatever is currently being recorded or streaming mm -hmm. uh, and also has Genlock which that's gonna be another episode Genlock. <laughs> uh, pretty pretty big sensor so again you're gonna have potential depth of field issues with a camera like this uh, but yeah, it is big, heavy, big and heavy. Yeah, this is what I would shoot on handheld, <laughs> sometimes for an hour. What? How much does this weigh? Fifteen pounds? No, it's not that. It's not that bad. I think the body is like six, and then but then you add the battery and lens yeah, and that. everything else. You, you, it's, it, you'd easily pass ten pounds on on a rig. You know, twelve to sixteen is probably more realistic with by the time it's all configured. I'm gonna say fifteen because that makes me feel better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really heavy though. Like uh, the first week, because like, I wasn't used to this type of weight, I pinched a nerve in my neck. Mm because it was just like kneeling down yeah. and getting back up. It was Something, something you kind of, kind of got to work up to, to be honest. You can't just throw somebody on one of these who hasn't, who's not used to it. Yeah, I got so. thrown on. 
Yeah. It's pretty intense. <laughs> so. Plus there's like a rig and everything on it, but I do, it has a nice image. There are so many, I'll, you have a nice image, that's mm -hmm. for sure. All right, and then one other very different form factor. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> me, a weird one. Let me both take this off the knob off the bottom so it'll actually sit down. So this is what we call a PTZ, which stands for pan, tilt, zoom. So it can pan, <laughs> tilt, and zoom. So creative. <laughs> makes sense though i like so, that these are nice when you need a camera that you can where you need to reframe the shot but you can't put an operator there so mm -hmm. i like to use these up front in a room when i'm doing live production that way you don't have a camera operator there it's distracting people right um it's kind of out of the way yeah it's not big yeah and just like unobtrusive I've, I've stuck these up on stage during events and people just don't even notice that it's there yeah i wouldn't know what the i didn't know what it was mm -hmm. i think like when i first met you you had this set up for the panels mm -hmm. so like for that particular event she's talking about she was the only camera operator in, in yeah. the room and mm -hmm. i had this set up and i was controlling this remotely mm -hmm. from inside the trailer yeah so it looked like there was two camera operators even though mm -hmm. it was really just her and it would just start moving on its so. own i think a couple of people stood in front of it a couple of times yes they though. did <laughs> yeah let's think like no, oh. nobody, nobody realizes it's a camera so they, yeah. don't, they don't know to avoid it yeah there's a whole range of these. This one's kind of one of their lower end units. This is the Sony SRG 300 SE. Like so many other ones, great image quality in the sun, <laughs> not so great in a dark room. You know, that's kind of the theme. Like you get an inexpensive camera, yeah. it's not gonna do well in low light. Mm -hmm. So the reason I got this one in particular is because it has really, really slow movements. Uh, a lot of these are designed as primarily security cameras. So they're not designed to yeah. get a nice smooth, not designed to do a nice smooth, smooth moment during a shot motion <laughs> yes there you go <laughs> uh they're designed to quickly jump from one place to another like what's some what's happening over here and then what's mm -hmm. happening over here this one was actually designed for the smoother moment movement so hmm. um it this one goes down to 0 0.1 degrees per second which is when you're up close it's almost imperceptible mm -hmm. and when you're really zoomed in you can actually get us a, a, a relatively slow pan across oh. the subject none of the other models do that not even their super expensive ones so it's <laughs> weird w it's right. a weird fluke yeah <laughs> this particular model. Does that. so uh, yeah. but you can get like for example they, for example sony does have one that has the same internal workings as the z150 mm. ten thousand dollars <laughs> so PTZs get really expensive real fast. This one was three, three thousand. Okay. So it's close to the price of the Z150. The image quality is nowhere even even near. It's not even in the same ballpark. But again, it's a supplemental camera. It doesn't save you having to have another camera operator because somebody still has to control it. Right. Like it's, it doesn't have a mind of its own. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you just want a static. I mean, no, shot I should mention though, the, uh, the newest Sony ones. They actually have a software upgrade that will follow people. <laughs> That's creepy. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so that's that's another form factor. I, uh, typical shoot for me is three of the Z150s, my X70, mm -hmm. and then two of these. So that gives me a total of six cameras. I can do that with three operators, and mm -hmm. we get a really nice variety of shots mm -hmm. with that. Lots of coverage. So, yep. Yeah. And yeah, so even though it's a, only a crew of four, we can do some pretty nice looking mm -hmm. stuff. So. Yep. But bottom line with cameras you kind of get what you pay for yes so if you try and skimp you're going to be making some sacrifices that you probably would regret would regret later especially in live because you can't fix it later right <laughs> that's the biggest thing is like if you whatever you're doing that's what you get yeah very much so it's not yeah. like film where you can go and correct a shot or make it look better or whatever later in post like this is it that said though, if you do record ISO, isolated feeds in each camera, if you need to fix something in post, you can. It just requires a little effort to sync the cameras back up with your with your live recording. That's so too you, much work. So it, it is, <laughs> it is, but, 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 you know, and when I got into live, I expected I would probably never have to do that, but in reality, I've had to do that quite a number of times for, for, for clients, you know, like mm. maybe as a director, I didn't see something that was going on somewhere or I hit the wrong button somewhere and I need to fix it. By, yeah. by recording the isolated feeds, at least you can go back and fix something if, if you need to. If they need it later. Yeah. yeah, not ideal, but, no. but it's possible. That's all the cameras, so. We can talk about this bad boy. Yeah, we should mention zoom controllers. Uh, I get asked about this a lot because 
I guess this is discontinued. Yeah, that part, yeah, that particular model hasn't been made for several years. Yeah. So, but the zoom controller basically allows you to control. So you put your you put your camera on a tripod, and then the mm -hmm. zoom controller is way up here. Yeah. And your so hands are usually on the. the you the want bar. your hand on the. The tripod. Handle. Handle. Yep. Is there a special yeah. name? Pan for bar. That? Yeah. Pan bar, whatever, and then yeah, you're it's easily accessible right here. So. Change speed, zoom, and then focus. Right. I always press the wrong buttons though. <laughs> Now this is a little bit different than what, what you typically see people using for zoom controllers. This is mm -hmm. uses push buttons to, to do your zooming. Right. The more conventional style uses a zoom rocker like this. And that just looks like a nightmare to me. I can't believe that thing <laughs> exists. Because you can't see the speed. Yeah. It's all by feel. It's, it's a guess. Yeah. And you're just that's guessing kind of the, the whole time. But that's sort of the problem with cameras at this level. You, all, all these cameras, like they only have so many different zoom speeds. And so when you've got a rocker like this, you're not really sure if you're on speed one or speed two. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the wrong position, it could often alternate back and forth and screw up your shot. That's, yeah. why, that's why I like the push button ones. Mm -hmm. you, you set the speed, the knob doesn't move. And right. then you press the button to actually do the zoom. Mm -hmm. And that way it's nice and steady and yeah. it looks better. So I started with these and then got rid of them pretty fast mm -hmm. because so many shots were getting messed up. Yeah, uh, the one that I did that I actually really liked was a handle mm -hmm. and you turn your yeah, hand like you this. The, that's when you get into the pro. And you have like your thumb, I think, to focus. It's been a while since I've done it, but that was my favorite one. My hand was already there anyway and like all I had to do was turn left or right. Mm -hmm. Super simple. Yeah, you find some of the, some of the professional high-end stuff using that. Yeah. But at the same time, you also find a lot of pros that are using rockers as well. In that case, they actually work well because there isn't just a handful of speeds that you can choose from. And if you vary a little bit, you'll never, you'll never see the difference in the shot. Yeah. So they work better when you're in, on the high end. But let's very quickly talk about a couple others that I don't have. So this is Blackmagic Studio Camera. Kind of a very unusual form factor. <laughs> All right, so this one, this is Blackmagic Studio Camera. This is a bit of a weird beast. I've never seen any other manufacturer come up with a, a, a camera that looks like this, but it's mm -hmm. got a, a huge 10 inch screen on the back and then it uses uh, micro four thirds lenses on the front. Yeah, so, and I've used this camera before, which, funny, and I, I remember haven't. thinking it was weird, and I thought it was a monitor, and I was like, wait a second, there's a lens on it. <laughs> I, I admire the idea, I just, I don't think that they, going with a micro four-thirds mount for the lens was a great choice by the by Blackmagic. So if they produced a new version of that that used a, a B4 or PL mount, that could actually mm -hmm. be a really cool thing. Having that huge viewfinder is nice for... It is really nice, seeing what's yeah. going on and mm -hmm. making sure your focus is good. You know, yep. it's way easier to focus on a huge screen like that than it is uh, something that's a little smaller. Mm -hmm. This one also supports fiber, which uh, we're going to be doing a video on DJP channel about. Yeah. And it's, uh, it also has built-in intercom and things like that. So. Oh yeah, I did use that too. Yep. So that's that's one option. Black Mac, Black Magic also has the Ursa Broadcast, which is kind of the same form factor as the Ursa Mini that I showed earlier, mm -hmm. but it's really designed for broadcast use. So it has a, the it's called the B4 lens mount on it, and that's what you typically find for professional live cameras. Okay. So, yeah, there we go. So you can see the big box lens with the Ursa broadcast on it. So. That's uh, the lens? Yeah, uh, this box on the front is the lens. Yeah, that's what they call a box lens. It's ugly. Uh, <laughs> they, have, <laughs> they have huge, huge uh, lenses in them, and they capture a lot of light. Hmm. And typically get a wide zoom range too. So like this one, that's a 27 times. See the big 27 on there. It means it's 27 times zoom. And then they usually have a doubler in there too. So you can you actually actually get a double the range. So it, it, that would be more like a 54 times zoom. Uh, and they have you can buy these with 100 times zoom native, and then you double it out to 200 times zoom. And that's what mm -hmm. you'd find used in like a football stadium for NFL game or something like that. Mm -hmm. Those lenses cost more than most people's houses, so you can, oh. you can, you can spend $300,000 on one of those lenses. Yeah, but there's the, the Ursa Broadcast with kind of a more typical lens that you would use mm -hmm. with it. It seems a little lopsided, a little back heavy to me, but... It but looks heavy. Most of the people that I've talked to who have used the Ursa Broadcast actually kind of like it, so... Mm. Uh, would you ever use it? I'd consider it. The big problem is I don't have any of these lenses, so... Oh, right. The, lens, the camera's pretty affordable at only $3,500, but hmm. then you're spending easily <laughs> twice that for a, for a decent lens. And then we'll take a look at some of the stuff Sony has. So this is the kind of your more traditional Sony broadcast style camera. This is a 4K model, uh, the HDC 5500. I don't know the exact price, but if I was going to guess, I'd say that the body just alone without any accessories on it's probably $40,000 $40 to $50,000. 
Just the way they are. That's it. Just the way they are. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the R and D. Uh, you're paying for R and D when when you when you buy a camera like that. Uh, these cameras also typically work with uh, um, a CCU camera control unit mm -hmm. like this. What you find in professional workflows like that is that you, the camera operator doesn't doesn't control the exposure or the color on the camera. That's controlled by an engineer in the truck mm -hmm. and behind the scenes. And this right. is this is the piece of equipment that they use to do that. So. This knob down here actually controls the exposure, and then you've got some color controls here. A little more towards the affordable range, like this is the Sony PXW Z280. This is two models up from the Z150 that we use. Um, this is what they call a three-chip uh, sensor, so it has separate sensors for red, green, and blue, which gives you better low-light sensitivity and more accurate colors and a sharper picture twice the price of the Z150 so again you get what you pay for yeah and then the other one I wanted to mention here I Sony and Blackmagic are obviously not the only companies in town that do this kind of stuff so here's a Panax, Panasonic AG CX350 this one competes directly with the Z150 that I use they're very similar you know you could someone would be very happy with either camera mm -hmm. this one has less uh, pixels it's, it's a little okay. bit lower resolution, yeah. This one's 15 megapixel, whereas the Z150 is 20. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that actually mean, means anything in the real world in terms of difference in, in image quality. Like if you can actually tell. Yeah, I yeah, I don't know if you could, but okay. but but that that's Panasonic's offering. And there's you know uh, cameras from Canon and JVC and mm -hmm. Tachi, and there's like there's a, there's a ton of other manufacturers that are producing uh, cameras that are meant for live work. So right. But again, it's. Uh, what do you need? What's going to work right for the particular environment that you're working in? Mm -hmm. um, what's in your, within your budget? You know, those, there's a lot of factors that come into choosing a camera. But I found that for the sort of th work that I do, that the Z150 is about perfect. It's affordable, produces yeah. a stellar image for the price. Um, very flexible in terms of where you can use to shoot it. It's really good in low light. One of the best camcorders mm -hmm. I've ever used for low light. Yeah, for the concert it looked really good. Yeah, I mean, we had very, was, it, very little lighting, lighting in there. Yeah. yeah, and the image coming out of that's fantastic. And mm -hmm. Again, you're watch if you guys are watching Stream Team here on the YouTube channel, you're seeing that camera, so uh, that's what we used to shoot. How do we look? Like? Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of the your crash course in some of the different types of cameras that are available. Right. And um, yeah, just uh, got to do research, figure out what's going to be work right for your mm -hmm. particular workflow. So. Yeah, definitely. If you're going to be doing live, you're going to need something catered to live. Yeah, because it's just it's different. It's a different workflow than mm -hmm. than you're going to get shooting your kid's birthday party or something. Right. You know, so and honestly, the biggest topic. factor that controls what the, <laughs> the quality of the image isn't the camera itself at all. It's lighting. Right. It's lighting. We'll cover. We should probably talk about lighting at some yeah, point. Yeah, it's, it's it's on the list of things yeah. to do. So, but, uh, I'm not a lighting expert. I, you don't have a ton of experience with lighting either, do you? Uh, some. I mean, I know how to light. I might not know all the technical. So maybe that's an episode. Great where you, lights. That's an episode where you teach me. <laughs> I love Kino Flow lights. Those are my favorite. So, but yep. those are again more for film stuff. But I mean. But the essen so it's it essentially matter. the same yeah. thing, like three-point lighting, it's all the same yeah. with photography, film. Yeah, a, a bad camera will look good in great lighting. Mm -hmm. A great camera will still look bad in bad lighting. Right. Yeah. Every time like I go do family pictures or anything, like I'm in charge of where we stand and stuff, even mm -hmm. outside. Yeah. I'll be like, let's go outside, the lighting's going to be better because it's daylight, let's go in the shade if it's too bright. Yeah. And because everyone has their phone. And I just know it's going to be ten times better, mm -hmm. just because of the lighting. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you could get you could totally get away with shooting an event on an iPhone if the lighting is good. Mm-hmm. So don't do that though. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> but you could. It, 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 it's, it's technically possible. So, yeah. So wow. Uh, did you learn anything today? <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, looking at those cameras, I know I could never afford them, <laughs> but that's yeah. nice to know. Like, Great. share, subscribe. Yep. Send this out. We should be getting. 10,000 subscribers soon, very yes. soon, within like the next couple weeks. Yeah. So help us get up to that point so we could have a virtual party. Very exciting. We're going to dress up. And theoretically, we'll also hit 1.5 million views on the channel. Right. About the same day. Yeah. <laughs> Should be. So, so yeah. we're famous. <laughs> in our own little world. Yay. <laughs> Big fish in a very small pond. Yep. <laughs> That's so, the way I like it. Yeah. 
So <laughs> anyway, thanks guys for watching and have a fantastic day. Ha <laughs>